Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about biblical faith. So I'm teaching it partially like traditionally, and then I felt impressed to take different subjects in the Bible and show that we definitely need faith to operate in these things because they all have to do with the spiritual dimension. For example, we've been talking now about the three baptisms and uh, as recorded in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. So that's plural. Now, we've just taken three of them, you know, the, the born-again experience, the water baptism, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, like I said earlier, there's the baptism unto death and all that sort of thing. But these are the three primarily that we see used consistently in, in, in the body of Christ. And so we did talk about water baptism, and well, first of all, you need to be born again. That's always, that's the first one of the three baptisms. That is mandatory. It's only after you're born again, then you can talk about water baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, we have been talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit at length, and uh, more recently, of course, we talked about why tongues. That's a supernatural manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, of course, by faith, it takes faith to operate in all these different ways uh, uh, in, in tongues. There's different benefits for speaking in tongues, and it's all by faith. Now, I would be amiss if I didn't mention that also in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have what's called the 12 gifts of the Spirit. Now, it's not my purpose to take each gift and just, you know, and expound on them. It's what my purpose is, is to mention these nine gifts and point out that it takes faith, biblical faith, to be able to operate in these things because they have to do with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He is a spirit, and these are his gifts. They're supernatural gifts. And so in the supernatural, we that are living in this natural realm, in these physical bodies, it's by faith that we partake and operate in these 12 gifts. And for example, we have, I've broken it down to, and others have, and that's how I learned to do it. It was easy. There, of the nine gifts, there's three that reveal something, there's three power gifts, and there's three vocal gifts. That makes nine. First of all, when you talk about revealing something, we have the word of wisdom. Now, we have wisdom we've learned to operate in everyday life. There's just natural things that have to do with natural wisdom. But we're talking about supernatural wisdom, wisdom you haven't even thought of, that's a solution to a problem or what have you, and no doubt it came directly from God. Now, that takes faith to receive that word of wisdom. And then we have the word of knowledge. Now, this is knowledge pertaining to something in the spiritual realm. You know, we are human spirits. So what's going on in the heart of these human spirits? Or a word of not supernatural knowledge that you never would have thought of in the physical dimension. But God reveals this word of knowledge to us in, in, in many times so that we can minister effectively and know exactly how to minister as we're praying and laying hands on the people. God will reveal knowledge to us that only he would know and you wouldn't know just in the natural realm. And this would enable us to uh, um, get an answer to prayer or minister uh, properly uh, with that knowledge. And without that knowledge, we really wouldn't even know really how to pray effectively in many, in many cases. And then thirdly, there's what's called the discerning of spirits. And of course, what this supernatural gift does, because you can't see into the spiritual realm. And when you're talking about the devil and evil spirits deceiving you, you don't see the devil. You don't see in the natural these evil spirits. And, and deception can be very deceptive, <laughs> I guess. You can be walking in truth, and if you're not careful, you can be deceived by one of these spirits because they counterfeit faith. Remember I said before, the counterfeit of faith is mental assent. And so it's amazing how many different ways these evil spirits work. But... There's this gift of discerning of spirits, which is a supernatural gift where the Holy Spirit will discern or reveal to us, hey, hold it, hold it, hold it. There's an evil spirit working behind that. I know it looks like God, it looks like the truth, but there's an evil spirit behind there. And, and, and we'll be able to discern it. It'll be revealed, revealed to us. In many cases, we just 
we can exercise our authority in Jesus' name and the power of the shed blood of the Lamb of God and, dis and bind that foul thing and cast it away or whatever. All right, so these three reveal something. Then we have the three power gifts. We have the gift of faith. Now, now we're, ta we're not talking about the kind of faith where faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Everyday faith, it's that supernatural. That is supernatural. But we're talking about faith as a gift. In other words, there comes a situation where you just need, uh, you need faith <laughs> that's beyond your everyday faith. Like, for example, I had taken, uh, I had to run an errand and go several miles away from the the farm place that we were living on at one time in 1976. And as I come back, after uh, several miles coming home, I look up, and of course here a severe thunderstorm had already moved into the area. And I saw this tornado coming across the field, big black ugly thing, and heading towards the house where Kathleen was. And of course I heard from Kathleen later, she was down in the basement, she heard something like a freight train. Well, there's no railroad tracks even within miles of our house. And so she gets up and she comes to the top of the stairs and looks outside and she's looking right at this big black tornado heading directly for her and it was getting very close. And when I saw it, without thinking, I just pointed my finger at it. It says, in the name of Jesus Christ, you'll not touch anything that belongs to me and da, 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 da. I mean, that was a gift of faith because immediately that, that uh, tornado made a turn uh, to the left or to the right from what I was facing and 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 uh, never even got to, and and missed the house, and whoo! Well, it did go right, and it did cross the road again, and it ended up in another place where it picked up a, a building, and and set it right on the middle of the road. So praise God, that was a gift of faith, and and if that faith was was just temporary, if it had not let up, I felt I could have called the moon to come down on the earth. I mean, it was incredible, but. Fortunately, it just manifested enough to do what had to be done. Then we have the working of miracles. Now, these are supernatural miracles. There's nothing you can work up in the natural. Like, for example, we had, uh, that was a miracle when the Red Sea was parted. And there have been other outright miracles in our life which you cannot attribute to anything in the natural that you could have worked up. It's definitely a miracle. You know, like to raise somebody from the dead. You need to have a working of a miracle, the gifts of healings, and even the gift of faith. Those three have to be in operation to really raise somebody from the dead. So we're working on talking about those kind of miracles. And then there's the gifts of healings. Well, these, these are, um, we lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, anoint with oil and they'll recover. But then there's this special gift of healing where it looks, you know, there's no way. And you lay hands on them and I mean they are healed. It's a gift. It's, it's over and above all the other ways that we minister healing. And then, so you've got the power gifts, the gift of faith, the work of miracles, gifts of healings. And then we have the three vocal gifts. Now we have prophecy. Now this is not some prepared sermon that you made and you call it a prophecy. I know some people do that. No, this is an inspired word that you didn't prepare a message for. It's not a prepared message or anything like that. It's, a, it's an inspired word that comes to you directly from heaven. And you're speaking it. And it's, not, it's nothing you ever thought of. It's, 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 it's just divine utterance coming out of your mouth and exhorting, encouraging, or teaching people. It's a, it's a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And you speak out by faith when you're prompted to do it. It doesn't come from your head mentally. It's coming from your heart. Now, we also have diverse tongues or various tongues. Now, it, in the scriptures, we see that if you speak it publicly and there's no interpretation, it does not edify the church. But if the various tongues go forth, and then the, and then the other gift is the interpretation of these various tongues. So when you have various tongues and the interpretation, that's equal to prophecy. And now the church can be edified. The tongue goes forth, but there's an interpretation with it, and now people understand it, and they're edified, they're encouraged, and exhorted. So that's very briefly the nine gifts of the Spirit and how we need faith in each and every one of them to operate in them because they are supernatural. All right, well, that's the end of this session. God bless you, and we'll talk to you in the next session.